What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna start checking out Decal Machine. It's an add-on that's designed to help you use decals in order to add detail to your models without actually having to model out geometry. I'm really excited to start talking about this add-on, so let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Decal Machine is basically a Blender add-on that allows you to add detail using de decals instead of actually having to go through and model out geometry inside of your models. And so this can be a super big time saver as well as a performance saver inside of Blender. Um, you can find Decal Machine on the Blender market. I will link to this in the notes down below. Um, this is a paid add-on. It's $40 for the add-on. And so the way that this add-on works is pretty cool. What it does is it adds a menu. Um, so when you tap the D key, what happens is this menu now pops up and this menu gives you all your options that you can use when you're using Decal Machine. And so it comes with a built-in library of decals. So basically there's a number of different aircraft um, decals that come in and then as well, whoops, you can also access all of these decals right here. And what they do is they add um, basically images that simulate things like screws or recesses or other things like that on your faces inside of Blender. And so let's say for example that I was to add this bolt right here. You can see how what it did is it added it so that it aligns with this face. And what it does is it uses parallax. It uses what's known as parallax to basically simulate depth of something on a face without it actually um, making any changes to the geometry. So if I was to go into edit mode, for example, and look at this cube, you can see how even if I tab into edit mode, all this does is this just shows up as like a flat decal on the face. So I haven't created all this extra geometry associated with um, this bolt, but instead what I've done is I've just simulated that. And so if I was to render this out, so if I was to, let's add a point light real quick. You can see how if I was to render this out, this reacts with the light in the exact same way that the actual bolt would. So you can see how the light actually goes in here and it basically simulates the light areas and dark areas and other things like this. So this is a really great way to add really realistic details to your models without actually having to model all of this geometry out. And so the nice thing about these is you can uh, create copies really easily. So I can use these to So I can make copies of them really easily. You can move them around on the faces. They're totally adjustable. So if I was to select all of these, for example, and you can see how I can scale all of these at once and uh, they all kind of move around and they all look really great. And so one of the cool things about this though and so adding decals is really easy. And one thing to note about this is don't hold the D key when you do this, just tap the D key um, in order to pop this menu up. Um, but you can add other things in here as well. And it's a really easy way to add different details and stuff without having to add the actual geometry in here. And so while adding this stuff to flat surfaces is really great, I think where this tool really shines is its ability to take these and apply them to curved surfaces. So let's say we have this object right here, which is a beveled off cube. All I have to do is tap the D key in order to bring this up. And let's say that I wanted to add maybe like something that goes along the curve on this corner right here. Well, all I would have to do is just to add that decal up and then I'm just gonna move it and kind of get it ready for the location that I want it, maybe scale it down a little bit, but then all I have to do is tap the D key and you can just project it along this face. And what this will do is this will take this decal and it'll actually make it follow along the curve of this face. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So like for example, for this decal right here, since I've projected it, you can't move it around on this face because it's basically taken it and it's applied it, right? If you look at this, it's actually added geometry and sliced it in order to make the decal follow along this face. So you can't really move that around. However, what you can do is you can tap the D key and get the backup material and then just delete out the one that it created. And then you can just adjust this and move it around and then project it again. And so I would probably wanna rotate this in order to really get this to line up, but um, you can move it around and make those adjustments. So alternatively, you can also, um, when you mouse over the project button, you can see how this gives you a couple other options. So, and I'm gonna focus specifically on the shrink wrap option. What you can do is you can just hold the shift key when you hit that project button. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna shrink wrap this along this edge. Notice how it doesn't show up very well initially. Well, all you have to do is tap the D 
key and adjust this. And you can actually move your mouse in order to adjust the way that it's placed on this face. So in addition, there's a lot of other options for the way you can adjust this as well. So like for example, I can rotate my mouse and you can see how this will rotate along with that. So I can rotate using my scroll wheel in order to adjust the placement on this object. You can also, by tapping like the Q or the W, E keys, you can adjust different things about this. So like the parallax or other things like that as well. And and so the shrink wrap option is another great option for making things conform to things like curves. Now there is something to be aware of with that, which is that that is more performance intensive because basically what it's doing is it's using modifiers in order to wrap that along this face. So you don't necessarily want to do that a ton. Um, for a lot of this, you're probably going to want to go ahead and project this stuff once you've kind of finished out your geometry. And so here's another great example. Let's say that you wanted to take this. Let's say that you had a sticker or a decal that you wanted to follow along this curve, well, all you'd have to do is just tap the D key, hold the shift key, and then click on this. And because I've shrink wrapped this on here, this is um, fully adjustable. So I can come in here and I can actually rotate this using Blender's rotation tools as well. So not only can I, uh, not only can I use the adjust tool in order to do things like that, and notice how I'm easily able to make these adjustments. You can also use the blender tools in order to do that. And so you can adjust things like the parallax as well. And so let's say I was to add something like this bolt head or something like that on this face. So not only can I adjust the location, you can also come in here and you can match materials. So you can actually mouse over different materials. You can see how I can scroll my mouse wheel up in order to find different materials that are in here. So um, it's very simple to make this change just by mousing over this and rolling your scroll wheel. So I can make this match um, the face that it's on like it was painted. I can do a lot of different things with that. But then also within the adjustment tools, you can adjust things like the parallax. And so let's say for example that I was to tap the, um, let's see, it's the E key. And then adjust this. You can see how you can adjust how deep this effect is by adjusting that parallax. So you can actually adjust the settings in here to make this look more or less pronounced and more or less realistic, um, however you want to do that. So just the number of different things that you can adjust inside of this tool are just fantastic. And then one of my favorite things that you can do, and I'm still playing around with this some, um, but I'd love to talk about it more in the future, is you can also use the, um, you can use the slice function in order to add a decal along a path. So this is basically kind of like a Boolean operation where I would select the two objects right here and then I would select the option for slice. Well, when I select the option for slice, what that does is that comes in here and that creates a path and then it applies a decal along that path. And so what that's done is that's basically given me like a recessed look in here um, that follows along this face. So I can do that as many times as I want. like this, you do have to be a little bit careful to make sure that the way these overlap is okay. So maybe I'll scale this down a little bit. You can see how you can use that slice function in order to add this detail really easily. And so the way this is being applied on here, since it's applied as a decal, I could actually come in here and add some detail in here and then move this and you can see how you can actually make the decal follow along with that because it's just basically a texture that's being applied in here. So you can actually manually adjust things like that with this tool as well. And so I'm not gonna to talk too much about this in this video, but you can also um, create your own decals and also download some. So for example, in the um, so for example, in the documentation, um, there's link to some third-party decal packs that you can purchase. So if you want more decals, you can purchase decals or you can also create your own using images. I'm not gonna get too far into that in this video, but just know that you can definitely do that as well. Um, there's also some different decal packs inside of the Blender Marketplace. I haven't really played around with them, but you can download all of these and import them really quickly into this, uh, this add-on. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more about this add-on. I'm personally having a lot of fun with it. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it as well. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.